Today in the news, we got percentages on percentages thanks to AMD. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your Boot Sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Yesterday, the company lifted the embargo on a huge presentation that details their RX 7900 series of GPUs. They talk about their engineering philosophy, the upcoming FSR 2.2, and they even compare them to the RTX 4080. Specifically, they focused on things that Nvidia kind of fumbled on. Things like how the 4080 is still rocking the good old DisplayPort 1.4a, while AMD GPUs are on the newer, better DP 2.1. But they also brought up how their GPUs are still rocking a USB-C port, and how much more VRAM they have. Though to be fair, sneaky AMD, GDDR6 is not GDDR6X, which is what Nvidia uses, and it should be mentioned here since it has way higher bandwidth. Anyways, that's not why you're here. AMD also shared some slides with some juicy juicy benchmarks. Not against the 4080, obviously, but comparing their new lineup to the old lineup. And something pretty interesting popped up here. Let's take a look. Now, obviously, these are cherry-picked benchmarks from AMD, but since they're comparing their own GPUs to the last generation, it's still partially valid. We'd have to wait like a month before we get actual performance numbers, so I thought I'd have some fun with these here. So. Rasterized performance at 4K max settings. We have four benchmarks here. From left to right, compared to the best of the last generation, the RX 7900 XT has a boost of 26%, and the XTX dwarfs this with an increase of 53% over last gen. Pretty big move. Then for Call of Duty, we have the new XT at 27% faster than the last generation, and the XTX with a 51% increase in performance. So about the same. In Cyberpunk 2077, we're looking at a massive 39% faster in rastered performance over the 6950 XT compared to the 7900 XT, and another huge leap of 67% for the XTX. That's the number in the title here. And lastly, for Watchdog Legions, we're looking at a 25% increase compared to the last generation for the new XT and 47% faster for the new XTX. So pretty huge jumps here considering that the MSRP of the last generation was actually higher than this generation with the 6950 XT releasing at $1100 and the 7900 XTX at $1000. If we look at the ray traced performance, the gains are all over the place, but they're still here. With FSR off at 4K max settings, I'll just put the percentages on the screen so you don't have to hear me repeat them all, but we're looking at 46% faster on average for the XT compared to last gen with a low of 22% and 67% faster for the XTX with a low of 43%. Both lows happen on Resident Evil 8. Same for FSR on here, I'll just drop the numbers for you because this is getting a little bit redundant. Now though, let's bring price into the equation. The 6950 XT can be bought for about 750 bucks new. I think 704 was the lowest that I saw it go. But at 750, that means that the 7900 XTX is 33% more expensive. Thankfully, the XTX is about 55 to 70% faster in the examples AMD gives, which is great. By the way, for rasterized performance, it's closer to 55% here. If we look at the 7900 XT though, it costs about 20 20% more at 899 but the performance in these examples is between 30% faster in raster and 40 to 45% in ray tracing slash FSR and ray tracing. That's not as great if your goal is to play mostly games without ray tracing, so the 7900 XT might not be the best buy here. If we go one step further, AMD kind of solidifies this point. Between the 7900 XT and XTX, the price difference is 11% more for the XTX, but if we look at the performance difference, the XTX is between 15% faster in ray traced games with FSR off and about 19% faster in rastered performance. Essentially, the 7900 XTX seems to be like the best bang for the buck here. It's a fairly slim margin, I won't deny it, but it's still there. I'm guessing we'll just have to wait for the full reviews to be able to see what the actual delta is between the XT and XTX. 
Also in AMD news, we got HyperRX. This is an AMD specific technology that drastically improves gaming performance with just one click. The thing is, you might not necessarily like it. Basically, it combines Radeon Boost, a technology that reduces the resolution of a game dynamically with mouse movement, Radeon Anti-Lag, which reduces the latency in games by a pretty significant amount, and lastly, Radeon Super Resolution. It would also add more tech, but we don't know which ones yet. I'm guessing it would activate FSR 2 or 3 automatically when available. Anyways, all those features would be activated in one click. With it on, AMD said that Dying Light would go from 90 FPS and 30 milliseconds of latency to 166 FPS with an 11 millisecond response time. The reason why you might not like it though is pretty simple. RSR and Radeon Boost both degrade the image quality. So what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. Anyways guys, I just really wanted to play around with the numbers of the charts that AMD gave us. I thought maybe you'd find them interesting. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.